Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing the Halloween song book tag which was created by my wonderful friend Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books. She created this tag last week and was kind enough to tag me along with a whole bunch of other people. As you can probably tell from the title of the tag, it's all to do with Halloween song titles and I'm really excited to show you the books that I've picked for each of the prompts. Um, uh, Nicole has also created a Spotify, Spotify, why is that word so hard to say? playlist which I will link in the description uh, obviously because we can't use the songs in our videos otherwise we would have copyright issues but I will put that down below and let's get into the questions as usual I've got my trusty red notebook here with all the prompts in so that I don't forget them as we go along right question one thriller a book that was an absolute page turner for this I have gone with misery by Stephen King uh if you've seen any of my videos you will know that I've got a bit of a spotted history with Stephen King some books I've DNF'd um, and others I've loved. All the ones that I finished, I've given five stars and Misery was the first of those. This tells the story of Paul Sheldon, who is an author. He gets into a car crash in the snow one day and when he comes round, a woman has taken him back to her house to basically help um, nurse him back to health. She's a nurse, but she also turns out to be his biggest fan and she also turns out to be psychotic. Um, and that's all I'll say. I think this story is pretty well known. There was obviously a film with Kathy Bates I think she won an Oscar for it, is that correct? Uh, in the 80s, um, which is really good. It's slightly different to the book, the plot line, but they're still really great, both of them. Um, and this one I read at the start of this year or the end of last year. It was definitely winter when I read it and I could not put it down. It's for a king, it's pretty small, but it's still 350 odd pages and I read it in two sittings in 24 hours. Um, and it's one of those where it's, I was so tense that when I got up from reading my arms and legs were sore because I'd like physically been tensing my muscles all the way through. It's one I'm definitely going to come back to at some point and yeah if you're looking for a book that you won't be able to put down I would really recommend this one. Question two is somebody's watching me a book that gave you the serious creeps. Well for me there was only one book for that and that is The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. I read this before I joined booktube and Turns out not everyone loves it on booktube, which I was kind of surprised by because I, again, a bit like Misery, I could not put this book down. So this is um, historical fiction um, and we're following, what's her name? Elsie. It's been a while since I've read it, although I am going to reread it soon. Who gets married, uh, gets pregnant and then her husband dies and she goes to his country house basically to have her pregnancy um, and have the baby. And when she gets there, she finds that her husband had these things called silent companions, which are like wooden figures. Um, and I won't say any more than that. It basically goes from there. And this has got one of the creepiest endings to any book I've ever read. Um, again, I think I read it in one day the first time round. And by the time I finished it, it was very late or early in the morning. I think it was about half one, two in the morning. And so the whole house was obviously dark because everyone was in bed and I had to go from the lounge up to our bedroom. It's not far, we don't have a massive house, but the whole place was dark. And there's something that happens at the end of this. And basically I have never moved so fast in my whole life. I would just put it like that. So yeah, if you're looking for a book that's really creepy, I would definitely recommend this one. Question three, vampire, a book you hated so much it was soul sucking. I love this question. Oh, my choice is possibly a bit controversial. I know that my brother-in-law and I have very different views on this book um, but I absolutely hated it and I only got 100 pages in um, and that that book is American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis. I hated this book. I watched the film and loved it and it was exactly my kind of thing. Serial killer is, is literally what it says on the tin, like an American psychopath who he works on Wall Street, he's got all this money and he's got, you know, a beautiful girlfriend and a beautiful apartment, but he also kills people in really violent ways and is a complete psychopath. And I really liked the film. It's got Christian Bates in it, I think. Um, Batman, yeah. Um, I loved the film and found it, like, it's laugh out loud funny in certain places, which is always a little bit worrying. Um, so I thought, oh great, I'll pick the book up. No, totally, totally different to the film. It kind of reminds me of A Clockwork Orange, which I don't like either. Um, and it's one of those where I can appreciate what it's trying to do 
and I'm sure it was very important at the time when it came out but I just did not enjoy the reading experience at all. It's sort of an endless list of just like brand names and you know what clothes the guy's wearing and what coffee maker he's got and blah 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 and I know it's it's supposed to be a comment on consumerism and I get that but I still didn't like it and it was really dull and I gave up 100 pages. Next question is, I put a spell on you, a book featuring witchcraft or magic. Now, I thought about Harry Potter, going for Harry Potter. I actually don't have any Harry Potter in this stack at all. But I read a book earlier this year uh, that I just loved so much. And it actually has helped me find a new genre that I like, which is books with natural magic in. Um, and that book is The Rules of Magic by Alice Hoffman. I've got a whole uh, full video on this book, which I will link up here somewhere um and I just adore this book it's one of my favorite books it's, it's gone into my top 10 books of all time um basically we're following so it's a companion novel to Practical Magic which uh is another book that I read at the end of last year I think and really liked and then Steph said oh you know there's a prequel right and I didn't so I immediately picked it up uh, so Practical Magic, we're following a pair of sisters. There is also a film from the 90s with Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman, which I love at this time of year, about a pair of sisters who are witches natural with natural magic. Um, and this is set before that, and we're following their aunts and their uncle in the 19... I think it's the 1930s and 40s. And it's just beautiful. Like I said, I've already got a full review video, so I will put that, and you can go and watch that. But it's just, it's about love and family and natural magic. And I just thought it was wonderful. So yeah, if you're looking for a book with magic in that's not like Harry Potter kind of magic, I would really recommend this one. Next question. This Halloween, your favourite treat to, or snack to eat whilst reading? So I read on my lunch break. I read in the evenings when I'm having dinner. I read pretty much any time I can squeeze it in. So I'm usually, if I'm reading, I'm probably eating something. And I don't have like specific snacks or things that I eat while I'm reading because it's would get too expensive. But my lovely friend Jill recently sent me a copy of uh, Wilder Girls, and in it, she, because she's from the States, she sent me some sweets, which is something that we do for each other sometimes. I will occasionally send her a book with some proper chocolate in it, because I'm sorry, American people, but your chocolate sucks. Um, and she will send me back some sweets. So she sent me some jelly beans, because they're my favorite. And she also sent me these Jolly Rancher gummies. I love Jolly Ranchers. Um, and yes, yeah, so I'm quite excited to try these. So at some point, I will be eating those whilst reading. She did also send me some Skittles, but I already ate those. <laughs> I can't lie. Right, next question. Time Warp. What book or books do you like to return to at this time of year? So I don't have specific books that I come back to at specific times in the year. Um, this year, I've noticed I've definitely become more of a seasonal reader. And I think there are certain books that kind of are better at certain times of year. But I'm one book that I'm going to recommend that's a really good sort of autumnal read is The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. She wrote Room. This is very, very different. Um, this is historical fiction. It's about a nurse in Ireland who... Have we got a date in time? No. Um, who is basically sent to a village where a girl has claimed that she hasn't eaten for months and she's basically existing on God's will. Uh, and it's about her uncovering that conspiracy and finding out what's been going on and it's really atmospheric and it's quite slow it's a bit of a character study really but it does have a good mystery in it I really enjoyed it and it's got a lovely like autumnal cover I think although I have worn off some of the gilding on the front but I am quite hard on books that I read so yeah I would recommend that if you're looking for an autumnal read it is a little bit spooky a little bit creepy and like I said, it's got a good mystery in the centre of it as well. Next question, Time Warp. What book or books do you... Oh no, I've just done that one. <laughs> Sorry, what an idiot. Hungry Like the Wolf, a book you loved so much you devoured it. I want to talk about The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst. I read this last month or the month before. First of all, look at this copy. I won this on a Instagram, Bookstagram giveaway. And I was so chuffed to receive it because it's stunning. It's a really beautiful edition and it's got these like stunning end pages, which I will show you. Look. Oh. Um, and yeah, I feel like this is a book that hasn't had much love 
on booktube and it should i heard about it through harriet's channel um because she really enjoyed it as well i think she's on her second reread of it uh, it's historical fiction and we're basically following the life of ursula flight who is this wealthy um girl who's born into a wealthy family and it's about her getting married and what happens to her but also she wants to be a playwright and there are whole sections of this that are in kind of script format so as the scene is going along it's written instead of in prose it's in script format which is really interesting and she's just a fantastic character like this spans most of her life and i would quite happily read another book just all about her i don't usually do character-led fiction but there was something about this she's funny and witty and clever and intelligent and i was just immediately on her side and cheering her on and it was just a really interesting period of history to look at um in this way so yeah this is one that i definitely devoured i read it really quickly even though it's like 400 odd pages next question the adams family a book featuring a dysfunctional family now i really struggled with this because i've seen other people do this tag and they've mentioned the Weasleys from Harry Potter, but I don't think the Weasleys are dysfunctional because they all like love and support each other and yeah, they don't strike me as dysfunctional. So I was looking through my bookshelves and I was genuinely struggling and then I saw Circe by Madeline Miller. Now, this is a Greek myth retelling of Circe who was the first witch, I think. And if she doesn't have a dysfunctional family, I don't know who doesn't because her family is seriously messed up because they're Greek gods. It's all just complete dysfunction um and also i will take any opportunity to show this book because look how stunning the cover is so if you haven't already heard of this it's been literally everywhere um but it is like i said it's a greek myth retelling um of circe who was the daughter of a sun god helios and look at the naked edition oh it's good um yeah so i struggle for this one but I'm going to go with Cersei by Madeleine Miller. And then I've got two questions left. So scary monsters, a book genre, a book or genre that you are scared or intimidated to pick up. So I've talked about this before. I don't read a lot of like sci-fi or fantasy, but I'm not really intimidated to pick it up. Usually what will intimidate me with a book is if it's emotional. I am definitely an empath, so I really feel what people are feeling around me and I can be really affected by books that I read. Um, so I've got a book that I'm going to be rereading next month and it's going to also be my classic for next month, but I am feeling a little bit nervous to pick it up. And that is Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle McGoran. McGorian, I hope I've said that right. Now this is historical children's fiction set in World War II about a little boy who is evacuated and he ends up living with this old guy called Mr. Tom and it's basically about what happens to them and their relationship. And I've read this before, there was also, I think it was either a film or a BBC series and it's heartbreaking and I know it's gonna make me cry and it's gonna be very emotional and I don't really know why I'm doing it to myself other than I needed a classic, I saw this in Waterstones. It's a lovely, lovely edition, look at this cover. Um, so yeah, I'm a little bit scared. It's also got lovely end pages, but I'm gonna do it next month. So yeah, you can wait for my wrap up to see me probably sobbing over this book because it is really quite tough and it's quite hard going. It covers a lot of big topics and I know it's gonna smash my heart to bits, which always makes me a little bit nervous to pick it up. And then the final question before I tag, The Twilight Zone, a book with a completely different and unique premise. This is a hard question because I feel like these days an actually unique premise is really hard to find. I think there's some amazing creativity that we get these days that we might not have done before, but I think it's still quite hard to be truly unique. Um, the book that I've gone with is Everything Under by Daisy Johnson. This is really hard to talk about because it's one of those books you need to go in blind otherwise it probably wouldn't work in the same way so all i will say sorry i can hear the cat all i will say is that we're following a young girl living on a narrow boat with her mother and that's that's literally all i can tell you uh it's difficult to explain why this is unique but if you read it you would find out i mean i realize that's the most vague synopsis ever look at this beautiful cover um i can't lie it's not a book i would have picked up on my own my brother gave this to me for christmas last year 
he always chooses quite random books, like books out of my comfort zone, which is always great. And this was one that he sent me and it was a corker and it comes with a cat. Um, there he goes. Uh, yes, so this for me felt very unique because it's not the kind of thing I would usually read. I would recommend it. I would just go in carefully. Um, yeah, and that's really all I can say about that. And then finally, I'm going to tag three people because I would love to see their answers to this video. They may well have been tagged by Nicole or somebody else by now. I've got no idea, but I'm just going to put it out there. And at the time of filming, they haven't done it, so I'm tagging you. So firstly, I'm going to tag Mary from With Cinnamon, Please. And then I'm going to tag Rachel from Rachel Marie's Book Journey. And finally, Chloe from Chloe Reads Books. I would love to see what you guys make of these questions. Massive thank you to, to Nicole for creating this tag. It's really fun to do. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody's videos. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.